اوكي بيانات عندك البرزنتيشن يا جود جود ايفنينج ايفري وان اتس بليجر فور اس تو هاف يو وانس اجين ان اور ويبينار today i would like to welcome a friend of mine dr ahmed al amarni uh, we met did some lectures together in dubai and uh, and everywhere that dr ahmed al amarni he is he is holding an msc in master in in in, in uh, aesthetic in from italy yes uh, ahmed no yes from italy from marconi university yeah we have been together in, in marconi university yeah. it is nice place uh, viraj very nice yeah, yeah. And, and 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 nice Italian food, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, I will. Uh, you are going to talk to us about uh, uh, posterior restoration. I'm going to talk about the posterior uh, composite restorations, the secret of posterior composite restoration, about restorations free of uh, sensitivity, free of uh, failure, maybe some something like this, inshallah. Okay. Okay, can't wait. It's still is yours. I will share your screen. Oh, okay. Stage is yours. Inshallah. Bismillah. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Dr. Ahmed Alamani from Palestine, Jenin. I don't know if, uh, if I can speak in Arabic or in English only. So I will try to speak both languages because I don't know uh, the audience uh, nationality. So uh, first of all, we are going to uh, speak about the secret of posterior composite restorations. There are a lot of secrets, but if you follow it like, uh, like every steps that we are going to talk about, uh, you're gonna have a restoration uh, that will last at least for five to 10 years if the patient follow all your uh, guidelines, okay? So let's talk about the uh, presentation. Let's start. First of all, what's your goal when you are doing a restoration? Is it to be a famous, to publish it on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, to get more likes or something else? You can divide the goals in, uh, in the devil way or in the angel way. For the money and the fame and workflow, you can do a lot of restorations without following any rules. You can do the stamp technique. We call it stamp technique because we're using our finger to put the restoration in its place. And the patient will go and see a white restoration and he is satisfied with the restoration, but after one month, two months, one year, you, uh, it will fail. So the other uh, goals we have is the reputation, longevity, function, and aesthetic. You are concerned about your reputation. You are going to do your work more than 10 years, so you have to build a reputation that will last forever until you die. <laughs> so we are combining both uh, both goals to have the ultimate restoration, to the ultimate workflow in our clinic, okay? What's the obstacles about the uh, composite restoration? Composite restoration is a technique sensitive. So the, the composite, it's a modern uh, type of restoration. In the old time, they, are, they, are use, they were using uh, amalgam restorations, and it's very good restoration. A gold restoration, the ultimate restoration. But the seeking for uh, aesthetic uh, led the, the, uh, to, the to the invention of a composite restoration, which is uh, have the same color uh, of the tooth. So the seek for aesthetic, led to invention of the composite restoration. But there's uh, some drawbacks for the uh, composite restorations. It's a technique sensitive. It can be affected by moisture, even from the uh, breath of the mouth. So when the patient uh, uh, breathing, uh, the, the, the water vapor in the, uh, in, the, in the air from the patient mouth can affect my restoration. So there will be an obstacle. It's a technique sensitive. Uh, second thing is, is the sensitivity after the restoration. The patient go out after doing the restoration. After one week, he suffers from pain for, uh, during mastication or, 
or after four months also pain, uh, dropping pain, pain on cold, pain on hot. So it's very, very technique sensitive also. The last thing, the last problem, the last obstacle that we are going to concern about is the aesthetic appearance, the anatomy, the morphology, the surface, okay? So let's talk about the uh, technique sensitivity. Because it's technique sensitive, we have to use, we have to, we must use rubber dam. Because rubber dam uh, protect the field that we are working with, and also give the patient, uh, give the, the dentist the time he needs and give the patient uh, the comfortability, let's say, and protect him from the, uh, the uh, let's say, amalgam uh, debris when we remove amalgam. Let's see the first picture here. Uh, it's a very good isolation. Uh, I do isolate the seven, the six, and the five. Uh, look at the... Uh, involvement here or let's say the the the, the enveloping of the rubber dam around the sulca, uh, sulcus of the of the tooth uh, dr Mohab. yes i don't know if everything is okay i'm sorry everything is okay everything if anything uh, is bad or something send me a message on my messenger okay yeah yeah uh, can I speak with Arabic or only English? Uh, I think English because you have a non-speaking non Arabic uh, audience here also. Can I mix between them? <laughs> uh, if you use some Arabic uh, words, you have to uh, retranslate in English because we have non non oh, okay. okay, okay. Okay. Okay, let's continue. Okay, uh, I do on, uh, I do uh, isolate the both the uh, the six, seven, and the five. Uh, always when you do you uh, use the rubber dam, isolate uh, a tooth before and a tooth after, because we need to uh, to to have a, a, a wide field for working. And also, you don't know if the if the, if, if we have a defect in the six. Okay. Uh, and uh, it will turn to be a class two, okay? So uh, you have to establish or re-establish uh, a contact. So uh, if you do uh, isolate only the sex, you will not have, uh, you will not be able to uh, re-establish the contact between the five and the seven. So always isolate uh, tooth before and the tooth after. And in this picture, I will speak about it later. I do use the the floss. If you see it, the floss on the sex, I will point it here. Yeah, uh, it will aid and help you to envelop the rubber dam inside the sulcus and expose more of the tooth structure. But when I do use the rubber dam, I always have some problems first for, when I first uh, introduced to rubber dam and use it. This problem. I think everyone who used rubber dam have it. The uh, tear of the rubber dam and also uh, the uh, the hurt of the interdental papilla, the injury of the interdental papilla. So those problems have their solutions. Let's see the solutions. First of all, when you start your treatment, always, all the time, if you have multiple teeth or if you have a class two and you know and you're sure that you have class two, pre-wedge before you initiate your preparation. Some of the lecturers, they say, I do preparation before I do use the rubber dam and I use the rubber dam for the uh, restoration. No, uh, because you don't, have, you don't know if you have uh, pulp exposure or nanopulp exposure and you will have then a bacterial infection and later on failure of the restoration, okay? So always have the rubber dam. At this picture, I show uh, I will show you uh, the, this is uh, this is not a, a must to use, the, the, the shield, okay? Uh, this brand, I, I mean this brand, but this shield, the idea of the shield can be done by using a normal wedge, a wooden wedge with the normal uh, matrix, uh, uh, matrix, uh, sheet or matrix metal okay you can put the matrix metal uh, a separated one you can cut it with the scissor and insert it between the two teeth okay and insert the uh, wooden wedge the normal wooden wedge to protect the adjacent tooth because most of the time when we do the class two restorations uh, when we are preparing it uh, the pair uh, 
scratch the surface of the normal tooth, the healthy tooth uh, uh, near the, 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 the infected one. And thus will make like a rough surface. The rough surface will uh, have more bacterial accumulation later on carries because of the surface energy and the increase of the surface energy and activity, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so always protect the adjacent tooth. Always, always, okay, next. Flossing, as we said before, uh, before uh, flossing will expose more of the tooth structure that you need to see, okay? And also seal from the crevicular fluids, okay? At this picture, like the previous picture, look at the exposure, more exposure. Look at the cement to enamel juncture here, okay? This picture is a beautiful one for the anterior teeth. Uh, this side, the right side of the patient, left side of the picture, okay, with the floss inserted in the uh, inter in the uh, uh, cervical area, okay, and here without any flossing. Look at the difference here. Look here. It shows the caries and the healthy margins. So you can establish your restoration of uh, the healthy uh, enamel all the time, okay, or dentine. And also we can use Teflon and Liquidam. What's Teflon? It's the normal uh, tape that we use for the pipes uh, in, uh, in our homes. And the Liquidam, it's any liquid composite, any liquid composite that comes with the, maybe with the, with the whitening kit. Maybe you have a cheap, uh, uh, I don't know if you see me or not, but this is a cheap, uh, liquid or flowable composite. I use it for uh, isolation also and creating some some ideas inside the patient mouth. Okay, for this patient, I do use only uh, uh, the W8 uh, rubber dam clamp and uh, isolate it only. I don't know why because it's D7 I, maybe. Okay, and it's class one. Okay, I have some uh, leakage here, so I use the uh, flowable composite, okay, the liquidam. And the second picture, I use the liquidam as a, a, a custom wedge. I use it to, uh, I use my uh, instrument to, uh, to compress the uh, ring here, the matrix system here, which is, uh, I think, opti, opti matrix, I think. Okay, from care, uh, pro matrix. Something I don't know what's the name because I I spent the last two months in my house in my home. Okay, so uh, I put the liquid uh, rubber. Uh, okay, the liquid uh, uh, flowable composite and cure it uh, to create a custom curvature here for this tooth. Okay, and I also can use the uh, Teflon here. Those samples. You can use it in different ways, okay? You can use it instead of the of the dental floss also, okay? This is for the technique sensitivity, okay? Uh, now we are getting ready for our restoration. We do our, our preparation. So we remove the caries. Uh, in the past, they say extension for prevention. They do some extensions, some dovetails, some... Uh, a cavity design in order for the physical retention of the restoration, mainly the gold or the uh, amalgam restoration. But now we are prevention of extension. We have the said prevention of extension. So we only use, uh, we only uh, remove, sorry, we only remove that defected dentine, the dentine uh, and enamel also. Uh, the care is, uh, the care is lesion mainly, okay? So we don't have to uh, remove any other tooth structure because we have the bonding system and we have the composite that will reinforce the tooth structure, okay? So what we are using to know that we are removing only the caries? First of all, you have to have at least three of, the, uh, of these uh, ways to complete your uh, treatment. Uh, first one, which all we have is the eyes, okay? So you have your eyes, you see the, the lesion, you see the brownish stain of the, of the caries, the active caries, you see the plaque, you see, you see everything, okay? Second of all is the 
uh, is the uh, periapical X-ray or Python X-ray or, or the normal panoramic X-ray that will have the, the, the most accurate one is the Pytwing, okay? But you can diagnose it with the panorama or with the periapical X-ray, okay? And the third one that I use in my clinic is the caries indicator. The caries indicator here is like the, is the, the weapon uh, that I use to build the caries. Why? Uh, after I do uh, remove all the caries from the cavity, uh, I see a white, uh, clean cavity. And I, uh, yeah, previously, yeah, in the past, I did the rest, I do the rest, Restorations, I do everything and I see why. Leish, Leish, uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry because I'm fasting and uh, <laughs> I feel so dizzy, okay? And excuse me for my English because I didn't practice a lot, okay? Dr. Mohab? Yeah, yeah, we are hearing you. Hello, anybody? Okay, let's continue. Inshallah, I conclude. Okay. You can use so, some the key indicator. Please translate the Arabic at them. What you said, translate it, please. Victor, I'm to No, you are not. We are hearing you. If you want, if you want, you, you can check. You can open your phone and you can uh, go to Igora. I am not. I am not any comments. I am not comments. I am going to show the slides. I know. We are seeing everything. Oh. Okay. Go on. Okay. So let's continue. Okay, when I start my practice in my clinic, I do use only the two ways, the first way and the second way, the, my eyes and the uh, x-rays. And I finish the cavity with a wide cavity, clean cavity. I do my restoration and after one, two years, I shocked with the recurrent caries, okay? So how to be sure that you remove most of the caries? I introduced myself to the caries indicator and I use it like for four or five years till now. Okay, and after I use it, no recurrent caries, alhamdulillah. Okay, 99%, uh, let's say. Okay, how to use the the the, uh, the caries indicator? Um, can anybody uh, tell me how to use the caries indicator, Dr. al -Muhab? Uh, if they can say, they might put it on the comment. Let us see. Can you read some comments? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Can read comments. Yeah. I don't like to to only to speak. I like to interact with the with the comments and something well, like ask, that. Ask okay. Questions and they answer. They will answer if if they have the answers. They will answer you on the comments. Okay. How to use the how to use the caries indicator? What's the the uh, What's the steps for using the case? Use the indicator immediately after you finish cleaning the cavity and wash it and see if there's any stain or what? So, anybody have an idea about the use of, of uh, caries yeah. indicator? It seems you have to continue. No, one? no answer? They will answer uh, because there is a delay of time. But you have to continue and they will answer. Okay. So when I use the CARES indicator, first of all, I have to know that there is a smear layer in the in the dentin surface or in any surface of the tooth, okay? After you uh, finish uh, pre preparing your tooth, okay? So if you do the CARES indicator immediately, it will stain because of the bacterial byproducts and the... the the let's say the 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 dirt in the in the cavity okay so it will stain and you will remove more of it. yeah maybe with micro brush no this is the application uh, we we don't say anything about the application but but do we use it immediately after the preparation of the tooth or we have to do something else to the cavity mm -hmm. then use it you must clean the cavity, another answer. You must clean the cavity first. Okay, clean it with what? I did clean it with the pair. With the high speed and low speed, I finish everything. I finish my design. 
but but uh, what, what you are going to clean is more. You, 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 you finish it with the cover with the by an ACL and AOCL for a few minutes. Me, me, one hundred percent. The sodium hypochlorite, sodium hypochlorite. I soak the cavity with sodium hypochlorite to remove any bacteria by product. And eliminate the holes. Ah, uh, 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 they are not hearing me. Yeah, now it's better. Shall I, I repeat? You have, to, you have to cut the all the uh, Wi-Fi connection that you have around. Eh? Just keep your phone only. You I know, we are in Palestine. We don't have the super. Uh, <laughs> So another. Do you hear me now? Another, yeah, we hear you. Yeah, another was taking posting about etching. Do you make etching for it before using the uh, after before using the the. Okay. It's like a diagnosis, uh, not like a procedure for for the etching. It's a diagnosis tool. You like we use in the in the laboratory like a, a methylene blue something like this uh, rhodomine B uh, those stains that we use to indicate the bacterial presence in the in the cavity. Okay, so the answer is using uh, hypochlorite. Okay. Yeah, I do use the sodium hypochlorite and soak the cavity for like ten seconds, twenty seconds and rub it uh, like uh, to do like i do some activation for it then i clean it with the water and the uh, and air triple syringe okay after i remove everything i put my caries indicator wait for five to ten seconds or to the uh, i i read the, recomm uh, the recommendation from the factory recommendation okay every caries indicator have its uh, way to use it water and i see it if there is an, a dark stain, it's a caries. A very light stain, you can leave it. A very light, very, very, very light stain. But when you have a more dark stain, it's a caries and you have to remove it. Uh, we okay? have a question here. What about and also we have the visual. What? What about the chlorexidine? Instead of, of, of sodium, you can use chlorexidine, you can use chlorexidine, but we are using chlorexidine in the next step. So, uh, the, the sodium hypochloride is more uh, efficient and at this stage, okay, because it removes all the smear layer or not the smear, all the byproducts, bacterial byproducts within the smear layer. So, it's a very good, okay, great. Continue, you okay. Can continue. If there are any questions, I will I will interfere. Hello. Yeah, we are hearing you. We are hearing you. Hello. Yeah, hello. Victor uh Mohab. -huh. Yeah, I'm hearing you. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, the visual inspection, you can uh, have a light, a, a source of light, and you can use the light cure. There is a setting on the light cure uh, to emit light, okay, and see if there is any cavity, hidden cavity, mainly at the anterior or the posterior, any anywhere you, you want, okay. And there is an electronic caries monitor that uh, it used like, a, it's a, like a camera that uh, have some readings within the tooth, and uh, look at the picture here. They have uh, a, a, a different uh, colors. Each color represents something, okay? And there's a, a different company produce different uh, machines like this, and everyone have its uh, uh, its reading uh, colors, okay? It's very expensive, no need. Okay? After that, when you do your preparation, you have to be aware about the wall thickness. What we mean about the wall thickness? Let's see this picture. The, at the uh, first picture here, we have an MOD restoration. It's an amalgam restoration. The patients came to me and he wants to uh, remove it and replace it with the, with the more aesthetic one. Uh, 
after I see this, uh, after I saw this uh, time of restoration, uh, first of all, I did uh, uh, an impression, an impression with the, uh, I think it's uh, Zeta Plus, okay? And I did a cut uh, mold technique. Uh, if you want to know about it, it's like um, taking a stamp for the buckle and for the lingual cusp. Uh, in order to replicate the same anatomy and the same height of the cusp, because after you remove it, if it's removed, if you remove the, the buccal or the lingual cusp because of the case or because of the lack of thickness, if it's less than two millimeter, uh, you, uh, you have a cavity that's very huge and you don't know what to do and you don't have the metric system that makes you uh, uh, um, uh, like, uh, make you, um, I don't know what to say, that uh, replicate the same uh, curvature, the same height, the same anatomy of the buccal or the, the lingual. Okay, so I did this for like uh, as a precaution. Okay, then I, after I removed the uh, amalgam restoration, I did measure the buccal and the cusp, and it was like three millimeter. It's more than enough. Okay, let's return here. Okay, so you have to measure the buccal and the lingual cusp or the remaining cusp. It doesn't matter if it's buccal or lingual, mesial or distal. You have to measure it, okay? If it's less than two millimeter, you have to remove it. Why? Or you have to reduce it until you have two millimeter. Why? Because after the shrinkage of the composite, the stress that build up within the composite will cause a fracture. You can see the fracture within the cervical area where it's less than two millimeter until it, it's two millimeter. Let's say it's tapering, it's two millimeter, then 1.5 millimeter, then one millimeter. At one of these uh, height, it will break and you will have a horizontal line uh, because of the uh, uh, breakage, okay? We have here a picture that shows Uh, this is a picture. Um, it, it doesn't relate to the to the. Uh, but, uh, uh, I'd like to show it to you. Uh, at the first three pictures here and here and here, we don't have uh, to use a, a fiber post because every time uh, they asked about when we do use a fiber post, well, what's the criteria for fiber post? Can we use a, 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 or do a, a normal restoration or have to do a crown? Uh, for me, the only way that I can do crown is the last two, okay? Because uh, if you have three, Okay, you can do it only with the restoration, normal restoration. This may have to use a fiber post. You can use fiber post here, fiber post here, fiber post. But those three don't have you. You 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 must not do a crown. Why? Because if you do a crown here, you, let's say you have a two millimeter thickness here, two millimeter thickness here. Okay, and you did your build up and with the fiber post. Okay, so then you have to prepare your tooth. Okay, uh, Doctor Moheb. Yes, I'm hearing you. Okay. Yeah, everything is okay. Continue. Oh. Ah, then you have to prepare your tooth after you build it. Okay. So uh, you remove like 1.5 millimeter, one millimeter from the thickness of this wall, and also at the same at the uh, from this wall. You will end with the only restoration hanging out from the root. Okay, and you put your crown uh, above it, so it's very weak. Why do you, why not you use the, 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 the remaining tooth structure, the two millimeter of solid enamel? This is solid enamel. Use your solid enamel and it will last more than of that of the, uh, uh, of the crown. At this one, I don't also use a crown. I use something called taping top, okay? If it's two millimeter, I, I keep it here and I do some pebbling here and I do a table top with composite or with with the uh, with ceramics okay can this i ask one... a question please further the third case that you sh yeah. showed uh, this one? yeah this one ah. uh, 
Can we make, for example, uh, an inlay only by CAD CAM? Is it yes, uh, you can. better than composite uh, restoration or what? Yeah, it's better because you know uh, it's a controlled uh, material. You you did it uh, outside the patient mouth. You don't have the shrinkage, the stress buildup uh, within the composite. Okay, so it's better. But for the patients, you know the the the. Uh, the the money is matter okay so they seek for a little cheaper uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, treatment so okay. the, and they, they want it immediately at the same session so uh, the opposite yeah i have a question if you if you want to use for this case a cat cam is it better to use something with composite or with ceramic uh, I think with the ceramics. Okay. Yeah, it's better for the like, let's say, the longevity of the restoration. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Next. Okay. Uh, should we use liner or any pulp cabbing material? Uh, this question I've been uh, asked all the time. Okay. Uh, I do prefer to bond as much tooth structure as possible to the composite because uh, if, if I do bond as much as I can, I have the uh, more and much more uh, str uh, strength from the bonding uh, uh, to the tooth structure, okay? So the bond is the best liner that it can be. But sometimes the cavity is very deep, okay? So, uh, because of the cavity is very deep, sometimes we don't have a perforation, we have a micro perforation, okay? So what's the micro perforation and what's the perforation? The perforation is the, uh, is the perforation that you can see, it's one millimeter less than one millimeter and there's a blood. A micro perforation, when you see the shadow of the bulb and it's like red, but there is no bleeding and this is a micro perforation. If you use your bond, Above, the, uh, above it, uh, it may sometimes cause some sensitivity because there is a communication between the fluids within the dentinal tubules and the bulb, and it's very, very close to the bulb. So there will be some irritation, okay? So all the time they say use a dical, the calcium hydroxide. We say, no, we don't use calcium hydroxide. Why we don't use the calcium hydroxide? Because the bonding of the calcium hydroxide, the dical, to the tooth structure, to the dentin, is zero. So when you do your uh, dical, and it's good, okay, uh, it's in, in, in its place, and you do your composite restoration, the composite restoration itself will shrink a little bit. This shrinkage will pull the, uh, the dical away from the uh, from the area that you place it and create some uh, space. This space will cause uh, differential pressure uh, and cause some uh, pain and, uh, during mastication and later on and, uh, it will go to necrosis, okay? So I don't say all the time, but most of the time, okay? So what we should use? We have two options, the calcium, the, the calcium lining material and the glass ionoma lining material, okay? I do use the calcium lining material all the time. Why? There is a glass ionoma and there is the calcium. Why we use the calcium containing material, not the glass ionoma? Please, let me hear your answers. What, what is your question? Which one do you prefer to use, the glass ionomer liner or the calcium lining material, like by Dentin or Thericale? Okay, but, but, but now, now everybody is talking about by Dentin, which is, it seems to be the good results, no? Yeah, because it contains also anti-A in the by Dentin. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it is a material here. Uh, but, uh, why we use why we use the or Thericale? I th I, uh, I mean by the calcium lining material, not the, the brand like by the or Thericale. I don't know. I don't want to say anything about the brand. But why we use this section, not the uh, glass ionomer lining material? Why we do prefer? Okay. Uh, because uh, of the. Uh huh. No, no, I, I'm not 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 in this field. So I can't tell you. 
<laughs> okay, so we are saying about the pH. The pH of the glass cyanomer is less than three. Okay, so we know that uh, that three is uh, more acidic, more acidic than four, more acidic than than five, with a logarithmic increase. Okay, like uh, so uh, here the 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 acidity is one uh, multiplied by ten to the power four here to the power three here to uh, uh, let's say no no four to the power ten okay it's a logarithm <laughs> i don't know anything about the mathematics okay but it's like uh, like more acidic than before than the five than the six what does that mean answers it goes well with composite not the composite, about the bacteria. Okay. Okay, more alkaline, more bacteria resistance. Less alkaline, more acidic, less, uh, less bacteria resistance, and more bulb irritation. Okay? Dr. Mohab, everything is good. Yeah, uh, I have another answer. MTI or biodontin. Highly, highly irritation to the pulp. Yeah, highly irritation to the pulp because it's acidic. 100%. Uh, so we use the biodentin and terical, not the glass ionomer lining material. But I do prefer the terical or the by the team because the team is very big and you have to uh, use the whole capsule one time uh, and the patient came to you at the first session you place the biodentin then uh, as a whole restoration okay then uh, after 48 hours he will return to you or she will return to you and you remove like two three millimeters four millimeters from the restoration and place uh, the, on top of it the composite after the setting is 100 percent but the three cal you can use it when you whenever you need it and you can continue your restoration at the same time okay and you have control for the quantity that you use you can use a drop you can use the whole syringe you can use anything you want okay let's talk about the procedure the procedures here we have the Acid we have bonding, we have polymerization, and we have the filling. Okay, let's say uh, uh, something about the acid etching. Acid etching, simple words, use the acid etch, the phosphoric acid, uh, from 32 to 40 percent uh, phosphoric acid to etch the tooth structure. But the tooth structure, the tooth itself, consists of two parts that we are going to restore it, the enamel and the dentin, okay? So, the enamel is the hard, the tough material, 96% hydroxyapatite crystals, okay? So, it's more uh, uh, tough, it's hard, it's like minerals, okay? The dentin is 70% hydroxyapatite and 20% collagen, 20% organic material okay so the enamel is inorganic the dentin is organic so when you do the acid etching you have to deal with it as a separate uh, materials as a separate tooth structures the enamel it, uh, is a uh, is uh, is uh, something and the dentin is something else okay and at this stage the timing is the most important thing okay as we say it's different material it's different type of the structure the enamel the dentin so timing is very important for the enamel you can etch it for 15 to 30 seconds but for the dentin only 15 seconds and less okay uh, if you do your etching more than 15 seconds to the dentin what would happen there's this picture shows the dentin a cross section of the dentin this is the smear layer and this is the smear plug the smear layer you can remove it you can modify it and you can keep it 
but we'd like to modify it in order to have something called a hybrid a hybrid layer the hybrid zone okay the uh, after application of the acid etching okay this is the acid etch the smear layer will be removed and the smear lug will retain in its place if you do it like for 15 seconds but if you lift it for more than 15 seconds you will remove the smear plug what what would happen if you remove the smear plug there is a direct communication between the fluids within the dentinal tubules the dentinal tubules fluids and your restoration and because of the mastication forces the restoration will move will move a little bit in microns okay this will create a different pressures osmotic pressure on the uh, dentinal tubules and the fluids within it and it trigger a pain impulse within and pain pulse uh, within the uh, pulp of the tooth and uh, the patient will have a masticatory problem, okay? It will have a mastication pain immediately after the finishing of restoration. So when the patient came to you after two, three days, one week, and he said, I'm, I have pain on mastication, be sure that you remove the smear layer and the smear plug and you have etched more than 15 seconds for the dentin, okay? Another thing, uh, the dentinal uh, tubules fluid will leak in the bonding layer that we will have it later on and cause something called nano leakage we know or we all know about the micro leakage there is a different uh, term called nano leakage the micro leakage is having on the enamel or on the margins of the restoration the outer margin of our restoration but the nano leakage caused by what caused by the leakage of the fluids from the uh, bulb from the internal tubules after you remove everything the, the smear blood okay and will cause a uh, degradation of the hybrid zone of the hybrid layer okay this degradation and uh, will cause uh, a, a, a nano leakage and pain within one week after the restoration okay the nano leakage and the micro leakage you have to know the difference between the nano leakage and the micro leakage next so we have a total itch technique and selective itch technique total itch technique is to itch the entire tooth at the same time enamel and dentin you can do do it like like this you can do it like 15 seconds for both of the enamel and dentin and then rinse it or you can use uh, uh, the uh, selective edge for the enamel only for 15 seconds then apply the etchant gel on the dentin for another 15 seconds so the enamel will have 30 seconds okay and the dentin will have 15 seconds so the, after that you rinse it okay so uh, this is the total edge technique this is total edge technique 15 seconds for both and the other one is the selective edge technique that we are going to talk about the selective edge technique it's to edge uh, only the enamel you can use this technique only if you use the correct bonding system if you use the total edge technique you can use any system of bonding or any bonding system, okay? But if you use the selective edge technique, you have to modify the dentin. How to modify the dentin? By using an, a bonding system that have edge in it, uh, uh, a weak edge that go, uh, that are uh, that's going to uh, uh, modify the uh, dentin uh, uh, smear layer, okay? This is the selective etching. Look. I only etch the enamel. Another picture. This is only the enamel. Different brands of acid etching, different consistency. Okay, different colors. Okay. After you do your acid etching, you have to remove it. You have to rinse it. How to remove it and dry it, okay? You can do it like this. Uh, with the power suction, with the bond brush, clean bond brush without any fluids or liquids uh, on it, okay, a cotton palette or a foam palette. 
I use in my clinic this uh, all the all all four, okay. But I prefer the cotton, uh, the foam palette, and the uh, the the bond brush, the micro brush, okay. Hi, uh, question: How long you should rinse your acid etching, Doctor Al Muhab? What what we have been told long time ago and you know, during our our study uh, that we have to rinse for one minute. I don't know if it is one hundred percent. If it's actually let's it's, say it's, there's there is an equation for it. You have to rinse twice the time you etch. So if you etch like fifteen seconds, you have to rinse it for thirty seconds. If you etch for thirty seconds for the enamel, you have to rinse it for one minute. Why? Because a, the 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 older dentists that have used the acid etch or the composite from its beginning, they have the acid etching in its liquid form. Okay. Nowadays we have the acid etching in its uh, gel form. Okay. So they introduced the gel form because of the uh, of the of the debate about only or dentine only. So we have to control the etching gel. Okay. They control the etching. So they make it as a gel to place it in a, in a places okay and not moving to other places okay so they enter they add silica silica particles to the acid etching to thicken it to make it more viscous okay to make it a gel so uh, this uh, viscosity this increase in the viscosity will make it more retained to the tooth structure than the liquid one okay so if you only remove it with the power suction and and خلاص and uh, it's enough no you don't you, you didn't remove it all you have to remove it all so you have to rinse it with the treble syringe with the air and uh, and water for at least at least 30 seconds okay doctor it's okay 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 so um, I don't know if I can. Have, I have a question here. Oh, okay. So what, what when you the, when you are going to we ask the question right now, or we keep the questions at the end. You can ask me. Okay. What is the protocol if you etched more than fifteen seconds and the patient still have pain or mastication? You have to redo your restoration. You have to refresh the area refresh the cavity okay after you're refreshing the cavity you will create another smear layer okay because what's the smear layer it's the debris it's it's a mixture of everything that uh, that's in the patient mouth that's uh, in the in the in the procedure okay so you will create another smear blood you will create another smear layer and refresh the area and after that you redo your restoration or you do your redo your uh, etching and bonding the procedures the correct way okay 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 so do we have we we we, we speak about the uh, uh, the drying procedure okay so do we need the tooth to be very dry or what we need to have some witness some uh, fluids some liquids within the dentine mainly not the enamel the enamel you have to have the chocolate white appearance it's up to you but for the dentine we have to to, to make it like a little bit wet not a, I, I call it a dry wet not wet and not a dry not chalky white not like a choke okay to make it a dull it will be a dull appearance it will have some water but not too much water not glossy Okay, why? Because we have something within the bonding system later on called water chaser. What's the water chaser? We all know that the bonding system consists of a lot of things. The, uh, the primer and the bonding and sometimes the etching. Okay, so the primer, what's the primer? The primer is a solvent, okay? May, uh, maybe it's uh, acetone, Sometimes it's uh, ethyl alcohol, and sometimes it's water, and the bifunctional monomer. Okay, we all know that the composite is hydrophobic. Okay, so the introducing of monomer with its bifunctional monomer, okay, 
uh, creates a link between the two worlds, the hydrophilic and the hydrophobic world. So the solvent, the solvent within the primer, which is, uh, let's say, uh, ethyl alcohol, alcohol, will drag the, uh, the uh, bifunctional monomer of the bond, of the prime, sorry, and drag it within the, uh, the, the collagen network and the dentin, okay? So it needs water in order to what? In order to uh, pass through it, okay? So after that, after that, the bifunctional monomer, which has the hydrophilic and the hydrophobic part, will do its will do its work and bind both the collagen, mainly collagen type one, with the uh, with the bonding uh, the uh, unfilled resin with from the bonding agent. Okay, so we need to have some water. I know it's a complicated thing to understand at the at, the, at this webinar. I have a different uh, lecture, let's say a two-hour lecture for the bonding and the adhesive. Uh, protocols okay so I, I i i try to say it in simple words we need to have some water within the dentin in order for the bonding system to work you don't have any water you don't have the bonding on the dentin Le let's be concentrated on the dentin the enamel leave it enamel is very good for bonding predictable everything is okay but the dentin is the most complicated one because dentin at the same at the same patient, you, you have the right sex and the left sex, okay? You do your bonding, measure your bonding, you will find at the, at the same procedure, you will find that your right one may be stronger than the left one or vice versa, because you have no clue that you will have a certain amount of strength, like 20 megapascal or something else, uh, uh, strength from the dentin. You don't have any uh, precise number. Okay, so after doing etching, the, 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 here I say aging. What's the meaning of aging? Aging comes after the bonding, but I say, I, I, I use this term here because the procedure to prevent the aging is after the etching, but also before the bonding, okay? So what's the aging? There's something called matrix metalloproteinase enzyme. This enzyme is normally produced uh, by the uh, tooth from the dentin in order to, uh, or as a response for the acidic attack from the caries, from the food, if there is an exposed dentin, or from the uh, procedure that we're using, the acid etching, okay? So, the matrix metalloproteinase enzyme, it's an enzyme. It do lysis. It lysis what? It lysis the collagen. So if we have a bonding, uh, the collagen will wrap around the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the bonding agent, okay? And form the hybrid layer, the hybrid zone. This is the bonding of the dentin, okay? Dentin, not enamel, okay? So if the dentin of the tooth produces the matrix metalloproteinase enzyme, it will cause this collagen to degrade, okay? So it will hydrolyze and it will be removed. So the bonding will be lost from the dentin area. So after that, the patient during mastication will have some pain during the mastication. So when it will happen, mainly three, four, five months after the procedure. So the first pain from the mastication is after one day, two day after the, the anesthesia is removed, okay? Which is from the what? from the over etching of the dentin, okay? The after four or five months is due to what? Due to the matrix metalloproteinase enzyme, okay? So how to prevent or how to counteract the effect of matrix metalloproteinase enzyme? We have several methods. First of all, the chlorohexidine. Chlorohexidine, you can use the chlorohexidine 2% in water, okay? and soak the cavity for 10 to 20 seconds after etching, before bonding, and don't rinse it with water and treble syringe. Dry it the same way as you dry the water, okay? And leave the cavity dull dry, okay? Dull dry. Yani, not very dry, not very wet, between, dull, dull appearance, okay? Bil-Arabi Shahib, yani, okay? After that, 
you do your procedural uh, procedure like bonding and apply your bonding agent. Okay, don't rinse it with water. The second thing, you can use an acid edge that contains pencil quinone chloride. Uh, it's an antibacterial uh, uh, component that uh, some companies added to the uh, acid etching gel. Uh, it's very strong. Uh, the literature says it's like twice or uh, or triple the effect of the chlorhexidine and sodium hypochlorite for preventing the produ production of matrix metalloproteinase enzyme. But it's very expensive. The tube of the acid etching cost like $20. The normal one will cost like $7, something like this. In pickles, three tubes of spident acid etching, 45 shekels. Uh, the acid etch HV from Pisco that contains the benzyl quinone chloride cost like 100 shekels. Okay? Or you can use the, the desensitizing agent that contains glutaraldehyde after acid etching before the bonding, okay? Those are the three ways that you can counteract the effect of matrix metalloproteinase enzyme, okay? Very important. Dr. al -Muhib, any questions till now? Everything is clear? No, no, no. everything is clear. If you have questions, I will tell you. Okay. After we finish the acid etching, okay? We have to do the bonding. The bonding, it's like uh, a new world, okay? There's uh, different classifications, multiple classifications. I choose like uh, three sections of it because I, I don't have the time to speak all about bonding. There's a classification from the first, second, third, fourth, till the seventh generation and the universal. And there is a classification depending on the use of acid etching as a separate or use an acid etching with the bond, okay? So let's say, let's say that there is a gold standard in two ways. The gold standard with the, with the traditional way, the etching, rinsing, then priming, then bonding is the fourth generation bond. It's the uh, most predictable and the highest success rate, okay? But it takes time and it's a technique sensitive. You have to, uh, to, uh, to pay attention for every, every step that you are doing. For the etching within the uh, bonding system, the sixth generation is the gold standard, not the seventh generation, as they said always, or the universal bonding, okay? So the sixth generation that have the etch and the prime in the separate bottle, then the bonding in the other bottle, okay? Last of, the, uh, of, the, of it is the universal adhesive. And there is always a misleading from the companies that say, the, this is a universal bond, uh, the bonding. This is a universal bonding. No, not all universal bonding is universal. Not all seventh generation bonding is a universal bonding. Because if you want a universal adhesive or bonding, you have to have what? MDB, 10 MDB. It's a component. It's a functional monomer within the bonding system, okay, that... Um, uh, that that have the effect of chemical bonding of the uh, composite restoration. We have always said that micromechanical uh, bonding, uh, micromechanical uh, uh, reaction that cause the 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 composite to bind to the toth. Now we can say that there is a chemical bonding with the introduction of the MDB. Okay, MDB. This is the universal adhesive. Okay, let's say the Fourth generation, the H is separated from the prime, from the adhesive. It's a gold standard. And there's a, a literature that said uh, there's a 13 years retention rate of 94%. 94%. It's like a huge number for the composite. Yani, 13 years success rate. This is amazing. Okay. This is a, a, an example, the OptiBond FL from the Kerry company. Okay. Another uh, another one, the sixth generation, as we said before, the H and the prime at the bottle and the adhesive at the other bottle. Okay, they have a 96% retention after 13 years. Okay, this is from a company called Curary. Okay, this is this is the ultimate bond in my opinion. Okay, 
and there is the universal. Those are examples of the universal bonding. There's a, from PISCO, all bond universal, uh, Scotch bond universal from 3M, OptiBond universal from CARE, and Clarifel universal bond from Corary. okay? Uh, at the first three years, we have a success rate reaches to 98%. If you do the etching and separate etching and bonding with the uh, with the with this uh, type of uh, bonding agent okay but after 36 months which is the three years there's a drop there is an annual failure rate that reaches three to four percent per year okay so at the first three years you will have a very good uh, an ultimate success rate for the universal bonding but after that it will drop dramatically Okay, so the gold standard, as we said before, is the sixth generation and the fourth generation for the separate uh, classification. Okay, clear? I don't have the time to speak all about bonding. I told you before, I have a separate uh, lecture, like 150 slides. I don't have the time to speak about it. Okay, this is a, a abbreviation of it. Dr. Kulutama? Great, great, thank you. Uh, after that, let's say something about the polymerization. We use our composite and bonding system, but we have to know some of action, the reaction, what's the type of reaction. There's a photopolymerization and chemically polymerization. What's the meaning of photopolymerization? It's the use of uh, light cure to uh, polymerize or the composite. And the chemical, it will do uh, polymerize or do a uh, react within uh, without the use of the light cure. For the photopolymerization, we have to know that we have different type of material. Uh, we have different type of initiator, such as camphiquinone, the most common, okay, and phenyl propanedione. Okay, so there is a difference between them. Camphiquinone works at the blue light, the normal. Chinese light cure, like this, okay? It's a blue light, only blue light. But uh, other type of uh, photo initiator works at the violet light, okay? So you have to read, I have a composite, take me a second. I don't know if you see it. This is called barrel from Kilzar. Okay, it has, uh, do you see it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, this type of composite have two photo initiator. Okay, the camphiquinone and the brobandion that works with the violet light. Okay, so it has a different type of light cure that have the two waves, the blue one and the violet one, okay? So you have to read all about your composite. If you do cure it with only with the normal light cure, it will cure, but it will not fully cure. And later on, it will fade, okay? So you have to read all about the instructions of your composite and the component, mainly the initiator, okay? Secondly, the chemical polymerization. This is a very uh, important uh, area to speak about. The chemical polymerization, the chemically polymerized bonding agent is very important to use when you are dealing with a deep cavity, when you are dealing with a, a post and core, because the, we all know that, uh, that the light of our uh, 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 light cure lost its uh, strength, okay, uh, with the distance. Every one centimeter will cost you 50% uh, of the strength of the light cure. So let's say that we have a, uh, a post and core that we are going to build with the fiber post, and we have a feral effect from the cement to enamel junction. If you see me, I will draw an animation for it or a picture for it. This is the root. Okay.
and this is the gingiva, and this is the feral effect. Okay, let's say, Dr. Muhab Shafin. Doctor? It's better now, it's better now, continue. <coughs> ah, Shafin Lil Rasmi? Is a big Arab actor of the camera? Okay. Let's say this is a tooth that you are going to build it with a post and core. Okay, with a post, uh, fiber post, and you can build it. Okay. So the recommendation is below the cemento enamel junction, at least five millimeter, five millimeter preparation for the root canal. Okay. This will be enough for retaining the fiber post and will have the all the physical properties that you need okay so there is a five millimeter here and for the feral effect at least you have to have two millimeter okay less than that is not enough you need to crown lengthening blah 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 so you have to have two millimeters so combine it to, to each other in seven millimeters so you already lost like 50 percent of your light cure strength okay so after you lose your 50% of light cure, you have to add to that the, uh, the fact that you have uh, the opacity of the material for cementation and the opacity of the fiber post itself. So you will have no light emitting in within the last point of your canal, of your preparation, okay? So you will have what? You will have uh, unpolymerized cement, bond and you will have a failure of your uh, uh, build, uh, build up okay after like uh, two months if the patient ate uh, something sticky you will have the crown so let's say crown the crown with the fiber post with the cement around the fiber post not on the tooth okay you will have it failed and i do have some uh, uh, cases like this okay not for me so what should we have we have to use the bonding agent with the chemical activator okay such as benzyl peroxide or tertiary amine okay as a co-initiator uh, okay the, uh, those are the examples that uh, for the bonds that we use uh, the from Tokoyama, uh, Palafic Universal Bond. I have it here. This is this is the one that I use. Okay. And from Dent Supply Serona, you can use the Universal Bond from Dent Supply Serona with the activator separately. You can buy it separately, but it's very expensive. Okay. We finished the acid etching, the bonding, polymerization. Okay. Let's talk about the filling. Okay, what's the main problem of the composite restoration? The shrinkage that will cause the stress. The shrinkage always toward the center. The composite shrink toward the center. So what are the strategies that we can use to prevent the shrinkage or to compensate the effect of the, shrink of the shrinkage on the, uh, on the tooth structure? We can have our strategies like C factor, incremental layering technique, light curing techniques, and stress absorbing layer, the flowable composite, bulk fill flowable composite, and incorporating a, a macro filler or pre cured filler. Okay, let's talk about the C factor. C factor in simple word, the unbonded over the bonded. Okay, it's the ratio of the uh, bonded uh, surface of the restoration to the unbonded surface of the restoration. Okay. Uh, this is an example. This is C factor equal unbonded. It's one, the one surface here, because it's not binding to other surfaces. Where is the mouse? Okay, here. Okay, this is one surface over one surface. So the C factor is one. In this case, there is one, two surfaces that's bonded to one surface that is unbonded. So two divided by one is two. Okay, 
at this uh, picture, which is a class one, there is one, two, three, sometimes four, five, the mesial and the distal, okay, over one. So the, uh, the, the result of C factor is a three. So what does that mean? Any number above two is very dangerous for the tooth and can cause a fracture, okay? Okay, not any fracture, uh, let's say uh, it has an abfarction. Uh, they say abfarction fracture, something maybe. Uh, Dr. Mohab? Yeah. Yeah, I'm hearing you. You can't hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you, I'm hearing you. مش فاهم. عم بسمعك عم بسمعك. اه اوكي. So the C factor any value above two you have to consider it as a danger zone. So how to uh, manage it? Okay. By doing a layering technique. What do we mean by layering technique? To engage at most two surfaces at once. Okay. Two surfaces at one time. Okay, with the thickness of this surface, with this layer, is less than two millimeter for the light to pass through it. Okay, this is an example. This is this is a case. Uh, I did use the shield, okay, and pre widget uh, to protect the adjacent tooth. Then I use the matrix system. This is a six matrix system. You can use any type of system. Uh, uh, if you uh, pre-curve it or adapt it well, okay? After that, I build, I simplify the case. I turn the case from class two to class one. So I build the, uh, the missing mesial wall, okay? Then initiate my incremental layering. I don't have the photo. So we don't, we don't want to use the horizontal one because it engages more layers. Let's say there is one, two, three over one, so it's three. We don't want it. We use the horizontal, or the, uh, sorry, the oblique uh, layers. So it engages uh, for, at the same time two surfaces, bonded surface over one, so the, the ratio will be two or less, okay? After that, I did finish my composite, okay. But we have to stop here, uh, let's say, we have to stop at the cemento enamel junction. Anybody knows why? You, you can build the, 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 the layers. Okay, let's go back. You can build the layers here, 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 but you have to stop at the cemento enamel junction. Or you have to stop when you engage enamel. Why? And you have to treat the composite different way. Why? Any answer? No, not, not answer. Not answer now, but is a fine and a little bit of time. Okay, okay. I'll see that I'm Okay. Okay. Uh, 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 why we have to stop at the, at the cemento enamel junction? Because, as we said before, the, it's two different type of materials. The enamel is a rigid, tough one and the dentin is the more flexible, more uh, organic one, okay? So that, uh, that can be reflected at the module of elasticity. The module of elasticity, is elasticity on the enamel is 85 gigapascal, which is a very tough, tough material, okay? For the dentin is like 18 gigapascal, okay? It's 18 gigapascal, so it's more flexible. For the composite that we use, it's ranging from 12 to 16 gigapascal. So the composite here is more similar or more uh, uh, flexible, such as that of the dentin. So the dentin itself will compensate the shrinkage that will happen to the, uh, uh, to the composite because it's elastic. Uh, the, at the same at the same range of that of the composite but for the for the enamel if we cure the composite completely okay it will shrink okay but the enamel will not compensate the shrinkage of the composite 
So it will cause a cohesive fracture, which all we know, it's the white line around our composite after we finish the composite, immediately after we finish the composite. You can see your border, it's a white line. And after one, two, three months, or after the patient uh, eat chicken masala or something with the stains, it will have a stain and the micro leakage, okay? What is the cohesive fracture? Because the enamel uh, couldn't compensate the shrinkage that happens to the composite, uh, the, 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 the composite will uh, separate some of the uh, uh, enamel and cause a fracture of the enamel around the restoration and make a gap, a micro leakage gap between the composite and the uh, enamel, okay? This is called the cohesive fracture. So how to manage that? We are going to talk about the light curing. The light curing, the idea is to use a pulse delayed light curing. What's the pulse delayed? The material, it's like a living uh, creature, okay? You have to treat it well to have the best results from it. So how, 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 the, how can we treat it? You do like a single, uh, light, a single pulse of light for like one second. This will initiate the reaction, but the reaction takes its time if you stop, okay? It will form a longer chain. It will have uh, more particles that uh, bind together, so less free radicals, less free particles, less free arms, so less uh, uh, free radical formation, okay? Uh, and after that, after you let it rest for two, three seconds, you light to cure it for five seconds. This will stabilize the material, make it hard a little bit, okay? So you can continue your layering, okay? And after you finish your layering, you complete your uh, light curing by one, two, three minutes with cooling with the table syringe, okay? After you finish everything, after you check your occlusion, then you do your final curing for one up to six minutes sometimes. I have a brand uh, called HRI from uh, ENA, Micron. Uh, the recommendation is like five, six minutes. You can, I can post the sheet for you and you can read it, okay? So the traditional way that we use, we all the time do uh, curing for 20 seconds. This is wrong because you shock the material the material will shrink more, will form a shorter chain. The devolumerization is the chain formation, okay? Is the formation of a chain from, is the transformation from monomer to polymer, okay? This is the idea for the hardening of the composite. So you, you need the longer chain, the more stable chain. The longer the chain, the more stable the chain, the less shrinkage, the less stress. So you have to deal with it with the light cure, pulse delay technique, not immediate shock for the uh, for the composite material okay this is what we are uh, what we have been talking about i do for like one second then i wait for two, two seconds three th seconds and then light cure for three to five seconds for the enamel i do cure not not like this maybe sometimes i use this but i like uh, uh, i remove the tip like one, two centimeters away from the enamel and do three seconds. Three centimeters that if I have like 1,200 milliwatt per uh, square centimeter power uh, for the light cure. If I go back one centimeter, this is 50%, so it's 600. Another centimeter, it's another 50%, so it will be 300. 300 can cure composite, but not cure, uh, completely cure the composite. So you have a hard surface that you can check your occlusion for it, and you can do anything you want to it, but it's not hard. It's not hard you, if you have your prop and bunch it hardly, it will cause some marks, okay? So after you finish your composite, the, the, the occlusal uh, height, everything, you have to cure it completely uh, for the the seconds that we said, the minutes we say, okay? And then do your finishing and polishing. The finishing and polishing is after the final curing, okay? Finishing and polishing after the final cure. Okay, so uh, why do we leave it? It's like the dough. 
if you ever go to the kitchen and uh, need some doughs, uh, like have some wheat flour and uh, some water, it can't be done just you mix the, the, the wheat with the, with the water. You have to knead for like uh, 10 minutes and leave it to rest for at least 30 minutes. The same thing having to anything you do. Uh, for the composite, you have to le leave it to rest at least for like five minutes, six minutes. The time you finished your occlusal check and you finished your like uh, some trimming for the excess material, it will pass for like one, two, three minutes, and then you complete your uh, light curing. This will let the material rest and retract toward the enamel, okay? Not causing a cohesive fracture and full shrinkage, okay? Uh, now I did finish my uh, thesis part, let's say thesis part. Now we are going to talk more about the uh, morphology and how to create the Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat worthy picture, okay? Simple words, this is from Style Italiano, directly from Style Italiano. If you do those lines, this is for the upper and this is for the lower, simple lines and you can have a very good restoration, okay? Um, let's say a Facebook restoration, okay? Let's say some, see some picture, this case, this is, all the cases in, the, in this presentation is for doctors, okay? This case, this is the five, the five, six, and seven. This is after the removal and I did my caries indicator. And this is the uh, total edge and the uh, selective edge, okay? And this is the final results, okay? This is the final result. Look at the uh, the depth of the cusp, the coloration. I will show it to you next in the uh, uh, bracket part. Let's see another case. This case, okay. I did remove it. There is a caries here. I use the caries indicator. It opens. Look, it's class two. Okay. First of all, it's not class two. Let's say. And after that, it's a class two, okay? And this is the selective edge. And this is the final results. Simple lines, and you can create a work that's a masterpiece. Thank you for your listening, and any questions? Thank you, Doctor, for this nice presentation. Uh, I love the cases. Huh? Uh, we have two questions here. Uh, the first yeah. one from Dr. Mahdi uh, Zakhon. Do you build... Uh, one of my patients. Yeah, do you build your proximal wall with strong flowable composite or with conventional composite? Okay. Uh, I use both of them. I use the flowable composite. I will show it to you in the practical part, okay? Uh, I use the flowable composite, but not cure it, and then add the traditional composite, then uh, trying to, uh, like, condensating it to the, to the matrix system, to the wall, to the matrix system, and after that, uh, uh, do some uh, uh, shaping and then cure it. Uh, this will ha help us uh, with, the, with the micro gaps that uh, normally... Uh, uh, it creates uh, by using the the highly viscosity uh, a normal composite okay the normal composite is highly viscous okay so, so it's not moving everywhere so i use the low viscosity the 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 flowable composite at the margins and add the composite and condensate it and cure it both together not everything separately both together okay uh, another question, at the time of final curing, is it possible to cure all layers say, say, sufficiently? Yes, if you imagine it. I do uh, I do the, the this two buccal cusp, I have a layer there, okay? Then I add a layer at the middle cusp, then I add a layer, uh, blah, 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 blah. So all these layers, sometimes it's at the same level. So because I built each cusp, Long, okay, so they are at the same level. By the time I cure the first one, it, it takes the first second and then five seconds, so it's six seconds. Okay, then I did build the uh, the, the second cusp, 
So the light cure also will affect the first uh, layer that we have. So it will take another six seconds from the second layer and the, uh, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And you will have a full curing depth layer. And after that, you do your one uh, minute, uh, two minutes uh, light cure. Clear? Thank you, Doctor. Uh, I think we are running out of time. Uh, so we have to schedule another uh, Another lecture for the another day for the workshop for the demonstration, I think. Uh, okay. We uh, have demonstration today. We don't have this time to, to today. Okay. Uh, there is no more question. Yeah, there's another the last question. And if other questions, can you please go to the page and you answer them? Okay, I will. Is, I will answer the, all the comments. Yeah. Is C factor not decreased if class two cavity is transformed to class one? Okay, more well, I said before, I do layering technique to decrease the C factor. Okay, so it it uh, it transforms to class one, yeah. But I do layering to decrease the. We don't have the choice to 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 choose to uh, make a, make the layering then the class two. No, all the time you have to simplify the case. You have to draw your borders then do your composite. Okay, so the layering technique and uh, combined with the light curing technique will reduce the effect of C factors, okay? So all of that uh, strategies used together will decrease the effect of C factor and the shrinkage, okay? Thank you, doctor. Thank you for your nice, nice uh, lecture. Uh, we will soon fix another date to make uh, the uh, demo, live demo, please. Inshallah. I'm waiting for it, okay? Inshallah. I will Thank be you. ready, inshallah. Thank you. Have a good day. Hello, Salah. Hello, Fikhala.